Okay, I think we can get started and welcome to everyone that is uh, connected right now during the, the live of this conference and also welcome to our guests today, Jiridash Kumar, Ram Krishna and Hritai Shri. And thank you for being connected uh, with us uh, uh, today. They are in India, so it's a, it's a honor to have um, some researchers uh, bringing their knowledge uh, uh, in this space from so far away. I, I briefly uh, present the, the three authors that today will present a, a conference called the Emotional Aspects of Rock Art. Um, I can also make a, a brief introduction of why they present in this. In fact, I ask them to if they could make a, a presentation on this theme, because uh, during the last Valcamonica Symposium in, in the fall of 2021, they made a, a broader, more general presentation on, of a project they, that they developed uh, on rock art, of course. And one of the aspects of, uh, of this project uh, intrigued me very much. They were talking about the emotional support that was uh, uh, needed from uh, the, the participant of uh, um, a creation of uh, some rock art. I have to say that that was the something that, that we don't usually uh, listen in, in, in our um, researchers. I think that this comes from another cultural background that makes this research much interesting, very interesting. Um, usually in Western uh, culture, we, we consider technical aspects of things in general. Uh, which of course is a, is a lack of uh, other somehow more or less, but uh, equally important aspects of, uh, of uh, any activity. And the emotional aspect is very important. So that is why I, I asked them to develop this research. And in fact, I would also like to, to make a, a, a quote before I present the, our guests today from Furio Iesi, that uh, is uh, an Italian, was an Italian researcher uh, that unfortunately died very young because uh, otherwise probably today he would be as famous as Umberto Eco or other Italian um, researchers. And he, just this morning I was reading and he's talking about the, the concept of emotion in the, in the creation of uh, prehistoric images. He called prehistoric, he called them primitive, because that was the language, the book is from the 70s, so at that time they used the term primitive, but when we read the primitive we can understand the prehistoric. So the quote goes uh, like this, and, and the book is uh, Il linguaggio delle pietre, so the language of uh, stone, from Furio Iesi. The quote goes by, um, we have basically already answered the question of affirming that the vivifying element of the images included in the primitive conception of the world is emotion. The emotion therefore constituted the fundamental character characteristic elements of these images. They were born from a flux of emotion and crystallized in a perennial form, which I find uh, very beautiful and uh, which has something to do with the, today's lecture. So before that I give the um, metaphorically the microphone to our guests, I would like to introduce them briefly. So uh, Dr. Giriraj Kumar that uh, you can see in the video, he is a professor in rocker science and Indian culture, founder of Rocker Society of India and in, in, uh, its international journal Pura Kala in 1990, authored 130 research papers and seven books on rock art and Stone Age archaeology. His latest book is on Chatur Bujnath Nala, a magnificent rock art gallery in India, Sharada Publishing House, Delhi. 
He has been the Indian director of the EIP project for scientific study and dating of the early Indian petroglyphs. Director of the Razi project on replication and ethnographical study of early cupules and rock paintings in Chambal Valley, India. He has been Indian expert in the Chinese mission of rock art dating, 2014-17. He has been an active Indian representative of IFRAO since 1990, still present, and Asian representative in UNESCO in 2008. He organized many national and international conferences including the 10th IFRAO conference at Agra, India in 2004. He organized many edu educational tours and rock art study training programs to rock art sites in central India, especially Chambal Valley and in the Vindhyas. Uh, and now I, I introduce Dr. Dr. Ram Krishna, a young rocks character researcher with science and technology background and PhD in management with specialization in marketing and promotional strategies. He has been associated and worked with Professor Jiriraj Kumar right from his childhood. He has been an important active member of the EIP project team for replication of early cupules of Daraki Chattan, a well-known Paleolithic cupule site in Chambal Basin, and also uh, that of the team who carried out the replication project of the rock art of uh, Chartur Bujnat Nala. He has 23 research papers published in national and international journals to his credit. He participated in two IFRAO conferences, 2010 in France and 2011 Dar Darfur, Italy, and contributed his papers of replication of early cupules and management of rock art heritage sites. He is an executive committee member of Rock Art Society of India, RASI, and helping Professor Kumar in organizing the RASI conferences. Hritai Shri has been an associate, uh, so the, the, the third uh, presenter of today, has been an associate professor in communication design at World University of Design, Sonapat, India. She's a graduate from the National Institute of, the, of Design, Ahmedabad, India. She has worked on various multidisciplinary projects, exib exhibition designs and spatial design projects with reputed clients across sectors and scale, while simultaneously researching the aspects of narrative and storytelling and their applications. She has been associated with study of rock art as communication designer since 2019 and brought out eight research papers uh, on it. She has been the co-team leader of the Razi project on the replication of rock paintings of Chatur Burj Nath Nala. She's assistant editor of uh, the journal Purakala, the journal of Rock Art Society of India since 2019. So this has been a long uh, presentation because you are three persons and, uh, and so now I'm very uh, glad to, to call Jiri Raj that can start the presentation, you shall open the microphone because exactly. Hello. Hello, friends. Uh, uh, namaste, namaste from India, from all of us three. And uh, we welcome all of you who are associated with us, the Zoom meeting in this lecture. I'm very happy to be with you this evening. We will be presenting our, uh, this, the, yes, uh, when we were presenting our papers on the replication of row card in October, uh, this is the uh, Centro Comino de Estudio Prius 3 uh, symposium. Uh, Matteo, who, who is very much uh, uh, this the associated with us and a good friend of mine. So he asked me to prepare this lecture on emotional aspects of rock art. So it is because of his motivation that we have present, um, we are presenting this presentation. And I am very much thankful to the Centro Community Study History, History C and especially to Dr. Matlio. <clears throat> this is the, uh, it will be, it, it is a presentation of all of us three. 
but uh, on this the, mm, the screen <laughs> i'll be presenting it on be on behalf of ram krishna and also hriday shri so if there are any questions with technological aspect ram krishna will uh, respond to them and with the communication aspect hriday shri will uh, respond emotions are fundamental of nature mothers are naturally built with emotions for continuation and survival of the next generation and here uh, we can see the how this the mother hen sacrifices her life to save her chicks uh, this is from this the uh, facebook now 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 you can see uh, this is the composition in rock art of chaturbhuj nathnala though it is not very much visible but here is a mother elephant and you can you, you can see her trunk and her small cub they are chasing a hunter mother elephant chasing a hunter at chaturbhuj nathnala this is the this is the composition of stone age that is mesolithic age and uh, here uh, uh, the, here is the mother elephant her trunk this is the, this is the figure is difficult uh, going but uh, her legs are here the hind legs are and here is a her cub so both are chasing a hunter so how the mother the the, the authors of rock art have observed the uh, the, the incident in the nature and they made a theme of that incident to compose a composition rock art the expression of the essence of life can you see this slide no i'm still on the second one okay so we'll wait after couple of minutes or moments to check that the slide is getting changed on your side or not uh, now now can you see this this rock art the expression of the essence of life no only the second one uh, i've never seen a delay actually i have always seen uh... okay now i see the now, fourth now, page now, now can you see it now the fourth page yes okay rock art the expression of the essence of life yes extraordinary human actions are driven by emotional force of nature emotions such as joy sorrow love etc are integral part of human personality and it is a natural human instinct to express it for living a healthy life sharing deep emotions is instinctively therapeutic rock art is one of the media humans used to express and communicate to the community and generations to come therefore rock art needs to be studied as the expression of the essence of life in a holistic way this is the crux of this lecture rock art needs, needs to be studied as the expression of the essence of life in a holistic way now i am showing this the the, the video it's just a small clip uh, from the movie El animals are beautiful people in which uh, after a dry period of a long time there is a rain and due to that rain how much is the happiness within the all creatures there and how they are expressing it in terms of emotion just to relate it as considering it as the natural or the fundamental phenomena within us within the cycle of the nature uh, i'm sorry 
I don't see the I don't see the the video. I think that you shall um, close the the sharing of the of your PowerPoint, uh -huh. and when you share it, you you should choose a share desktop. Okay. Not share PowerPoint or share video. Share your desktop, so that whatever you have on your desktop, that's what we see. So I I suggest that you close your sharing and uh, you you show you share again your desktop full desktop Is it visible now? Yes, perfect, perfect. Okay. You, you, you can, okay. Now you can show whatever you, whatever, yeah. Uh, this the now the presentation is visible? Yes. Okay. Perfect. So, so this small video shows that after the dry season, when the first showers of the rain, the animals receive. So, how how happy they become and express themselves uh, when the rain comes. So, this is uh, this is uh, this is the fundamental. Uh, of nature. So the expression of the essence, growth card is the expression of the essence of life. Extraordinary human actions are driven by emotional force of nature. The slide, emotions such as joy, sorrow, love, etc., are integral part of human personality and is a natural human instinct to express it for living a healthy life. Sharing deep emotions is instinctively 
therapeutic. Would Rock art is the... one of the media yeah. humans yeah. used to express and communicate to the community and generations to come. Therefore, we are still on the number four. We we can yes, see yes, the number is. four. Yes, we are on the number four. Yes. Uh, Therefore, rock art needs to be studied as the expression of the essence of life in a holistic way. Uh, Verum's theory of emotions. Verum's expectancy theory assumes that behavior results from conscious choices among alternatives whose purpose is to maximize pleasure and to minimize pain. Room realized that a human's performance is best on individual factors such as personality, skills, knowledge, experience, and abilities. He expressed his expectancy theory of motivation in terms of a mathematical formula. Motivation equal to val valence, expectancy, and instrumentality. These are all combined together. Rock art. R rock art is the creative manifestations of life. Archaic human perception of reality, his wisdom and thought processes that has survived the vagaries of time. It also presents the human nature and ability to communicate it in an effective way. Significance of rock art. Humanity is progressing by learning from the past and adding its own perceived reality and wisdom to it at present. Rock art is a global phenomena and an important archaic source for understanding the human past, his perceived reality and wisdom. Therefore, it helps us to understand the human cognitive and cultural development through time and space in the world. Rock art and human spirit of adventure and creativity. So as I uh, uh, this the explained to you earlier, that rock art must be studied in its totality, in the holistic way. So rock art cannot be studied without the study of the rock art side in its total ambience. So rock art is a human nature. It is the human nature to understand the secrets of nature. Its quest is for seeking the truth, the reality. Imagine about the indomitable human spirit of the pioneering Stone Age explorers who first discovered the site when the natural and physical challenges were many times greater than at present. It must have been a team effort with full involvement and dedication. Rock art and human spirit of adventure and creativity. Once the site was discovered, it was used continuously as the rock art site, sometimes even up to at present as sacred sites like Chaturbhuj Nathanala in Chambal Valley and Bhim Bedka in the Vindyaj in Central India. It shows human spirit of adventure and creativity, overcoming the challenges and achieving the desired goals. These are the basic traits of humanity needs at present to survive and progress. <laughs> Yes, my video will look at that. Any vision of that? Okay, take it. Yes, continuous use of raw card sites. Generally, raw card sites have been used continuously for many generations right from when they were first visited by the Stone Age pioneering explorers. Sometimes as in India, Australia and other places, they are still used even at present as sacred sites with strong emotional attachments. At the ancient site, 
it is a process at work where a new faith identifies itself with that of an older one it happens it appears that for the same reasons the rock shelters were repeatedly painted for a long time the unique strategic position and beautiful natural surroundings still have a strong appeal for the present day people hence such sites have been continuously used for some ritualistic and religious practices chaturbhuj nath nala chaturbhuj nath nala is one of the sites which has been used right from lower pelvic as till present this is this chaturbhuj nath nala a magnificent rock cut gallery in, in jambal valley in india and uh, here you can see a chaturbhuj nath temple has been erected uh, on this the uh, on its left bank and this temple is overlooking a water reservoir this water reservoir uh, contains water throughout the year even in this dry periods so this is a very great source even at present not only for the humans but for uh, the wild animals also and uh, close to it is a uh, waterfall which makes a roaring noise in rainy season so rock art site must be studied in different seasons to enjoy its natural beauty and the rock art there rock art site must be studied in its holistic perspective therefore rock art must be studied in its holistic perspective in its physical and natural ambience it is a study of all the disciplines concerned with life sciences its scientific study can help us in understanding the roots of humanity its diverse aspect aspects including strong human emotions and their manifestations at different stages of human development in time and space i have been visiting chaturbhuj nath nala rock art site since 1977 when it was discovered by my friend mr ramesh kumar pancholi and his friends on was till present i have been coming here regularly for the study of rock art archaeology and their ethnographical perspectives sometimes just to enjoy the site in different seasons of the year the natural ambience and aura of chaturbhuj nath nala is so powerful that every time i visited the site i used to feel a powerful energy joy and spiritual bliss of enjoying the life in harmony with nature the study of a rock art site needs patience and involvement a rock art site unfolds its secrets slowly sometimes we have to visit the site again and again in different seasons every time we would be surprised by new discoveries and revelation of new facts one needs dedication and patience to explore analyze and understand rock art and rock art site sometimes one feels that one life is not sufficient to accomplish the task understanding of a rock art site and rock art therein for proper understanding of a rock art site and rock art therein we have to study one the lithology and natural ambience of the site theme of rock art compositions and the processes involved a pre production processes b production processes and c post production processes working on it we tried to use this methodology at chatrapuj nath nala and darke chattan cave in chambal valley in central india now chaturbhuj nath nala chaturbhuj nath nala is located in gandhi sagar wildlife sanctuary in chambal valley it's a rift valley in quadratic rocks of the vindhyan system 
forming a waterfall which makes great roaring noise in the rainy season a temple devoted to chaturbhushnath lord vishnu has been erected overlooking the water reservoir at the waterfall site vindhyan rocks are superlain by detrital laterite formed by decomposed basalt rocks laterite forms a good source of earthen pigments that is of iron oxide used for extracting colors by the authors of rock art theme of rock art now this is a very important aspect here we observed the theme of rock art generally not used to be a depiction of day to day life activities or socio cultural and natural environment as seen by their authors rather it reflects the reality as perceived by their authors in particular and the related community in general and also the human behavior developed in the light of so earned wisdom at different stages in human history birth and death are two important realities of life understood by the humans and are associated with different kind of ritual practices and ceremonies in different communities in different parts of the world in between these two ends of life humans have been making their best efforts this is i want to emphasize this aspect the humans are making their best efforts to sustain maintain and celebrate life in a particular environment in this process of struggle and celebration of life he manifested his ideas thoughts and emotions in a creative way in the form of rock art so this is the the crux of this the how the rock art and what in rock art has been presented now uh, i am showing some slides uh, from chaturbhuj nath nala and a few from this the associated rocker site that the site is continuously used so uh, you can see here the sampo in superimpositions and uh, this the continuous use of her rocker site also uh, this the demonstrates that the it is a sacred it is a sacred site or it is this site is having relation with their life and attached with this the emotional way so the the same surface has been used again and again and now you can see uh, in chaturbhuj nath nala uh, hardly we can see any scene of uh, uh, this the actual hunting or uh, this the fighting there is always when we see this the rock art there is uh, this the enthusiasm energy joy and whatever this the things so you can see this is the the a group of archers running or dancing and you, you here you can also see this the when we studied this the compositions uh, for the replication process the hridashri observed that uh, there is a this the uh, hierarchy in depictions so this in the front is the leader uh, it is followed by another person and this is the last one appears to be uh, this is the junior uh, person so it also uh, it can also be observed from uh, uh, his uh, this is the arrows weapons clothing um, this is the the weapons clothing and um, so many things now this is the this is a dancing lady very important Uh, like this is the modern art in in the stone age mesolithic mesolithic age and here you can see this the is this, this the some this the body parts like the breasts and hips are over emphasized slowly slowly over, over emphasized and dancing with this the the hands uh, going up upside and the one interesting thing is that the head has not been shown only this the the empty space gives the impression of the head so how this the uh, efficient the artists were to use this the minimum lines and to express themselves in a very effective way 
uh, which I have already explained is this the mother elephant and her uh, this the calf uh, is judging and uh, this is the hunter. And here one can see this uh, the matting scene of uh, a lion or tiger, whatever the things. So this is the only scene throughout in Indian rock art. So this is not repetition, one thing, and this is the, not the presentation of dead to life, but the, some of the incidents in nature, they captured uh, this the uh, artist imagination, the reality, and they presented it. Now, this is one another aspect. This is the scavenger, scavenging the dead animals by vultures. This is also uh, in a very important this the rock shelter, and this also caught the uh, this the attention of the authors that the, the, it is not an usual presentation. Is this the nature process going on, and how it is affecting? If the dead animals are not uh, this the scavenged, then they will decompose and will pollute. But it's a nature cycle in a uh, in a way helping this, the system go on in a healthy way. And the artist observed this phenomena and uh, it is very related to this, the nature and life. Now, this is, uh, this composition is uh, from Chipparnala close to Chaturbhujanath Nala. And here uh, you can see the two archers are here. One is here and one is here. And this the tiger attacked it directly. This tiger attacked the one of the archer directly, uh, and he caught hold of the hand of the archer and put his two uh, this the the forearms on the body. And this fellow archer did not run away because of the fear of death. He is shooting an arrow in the head directly in the head of this the tiger. So this is also a unique composition, not only in Chambal Valley, but throughout India, that uh, it shows this the uh, comrader, this the togetherness, this the em emotional attachment uh, with this the fellow person and at the end, how to face the challenge. And uh, the, where this, the location is also important. <clears throat> location of this the composition because uh, there is a very big this the gorge and uh, a feeder nala flows uh, to this gorge and close to it there is a rock shelter where this the composition is so tiger is still living at present and kiss the animals there so the location is very important now this is another composition from chattaneshwar uh, uh, when I say this, the Chattaneshwar, you, you see in most of this rock art site, they were explored by the Stone Age persons. They were used uh, for this the rock art making. And even at present, they, they have um, erected temples. Uh, here is a temple um, erected, uh, devoted to Lord Shiva. So this site name is Chattaneshwar. Here, this is the composition. Uh, this composition, the on the upper side, there are decorated two deers, and in the lower side, a composition of dancers, and it has been divided by a big uh, mass, and this is the big mass, or this is a mesolithic, uh, this is the composition, and this is the mass played very important role uh, in this the early communities as a as a powerful weapon. In, in, in India, in Mahabharat, this is the very mighty beam uh, used to uh, this is the use this is the gada. So here, what I want to say that this is the composition of uh, seven archers dancing. Actually, one can see in the close up that of the, the movement of the feet also, and uh, from this the uh, the 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 this is the Head, this is the headdress flowing in the backside. And one interesting thing, the, there is a first, second, and third, uh, the archers, there are two children here in, in between them. So how 
to uh, this the continue the tradition from elder generation to younger generation this is a very interesting so this is a ritual it appears a ritual dance and uh, naturally an emotional aspect is involved in it now this is a, the herd of um, animals maybe deer so all are moving in this the right side but when we see this the last figure uh, it appears that uh, it has received some sort of this the weapon uh, might be arrow and uh, because of pain the animal is looking in the back side with the open mouth uh, it appears that the with the pain he has this the animal has opened his mouth so this is the an emotional depiction uh, of this the composition now uh, how does the change in economy makes the difference in this the tradition rituals this the cultural practices so in chaturbhuj nath nala uh, there is a distinct uh, this the transition from hunting for foraging the way of life to the cattle domestication and here you can see the the cattle domestication starts from humpless cattle there is no hump this is starts from humpless cattle and the riders don't have any weapons in their hand and here here you can see this the humped very mighty humped bull being uh, this appears a ritual uh, the sacrifice scene and here uh, some priest is uh, standing with some sort of the weapon in his hands and this animal is being dragged from all the direction from the legs from the head from the tail by many people then technology advances and uh, the chariots come in the picture so it played very important role how this the technology changes you see when we see this the mesolithic rock art in india is a collective effort it is a community life uh, represented there but uh, with the cattle domestication pastoralism came into light in in the picture and astro uh, this is the pastoral uh, agro pastoral community community developed and here comes the authority uh, authority on the cattle authority on the land and this the all these things so it changed it changed from community uh, this the combined efforts towards the individual efforts and uh, this is a very big uh, composition this, this scale is of 50 cm and this composition starts from here to here uh, more than 3 meters and in this composition one can see uh, the couples a uh, all the ladies are pregnant and uh, carrying some sort of this the uh, object in their on their heads and the males and males are males are carrying some objects on, on their shoulders uh, on cover so this is a, a ritual it appears a ritualistic scene or exodus from one place to another place and here you can see an erotic erotic ritual uh, where a person with erected phallus are holding is holding the horn of a bull here you can see and uh, yes here is a pregnant lady hmm? okay yes now <coughs> we always respect uh, this the uh, war heroes and here is a depiction of this the war heroes with uh, with the bow and arrow and depicted with and this the metal x but when even at present uh, we we when uh, uh, we used to give respect to this the martyr soldiers we used to put this the arms 
or the guns down uh, this the their mouth towards the earth so here you can see also that the the x is not upside it is with down so it appears that uh, it, they are war heroes and uh, they might have sacrificed their life and so they are remembered with respect now the replication of rock art production processes understanding rock art is a difficult task however replication of the pre production and production processes of rock art and ethnographical study of the creative traditions of the tribal and agro pastoral communities in the region can help in this direction up to some extent i don't say that uh, we have understood everything but it it helps scientifically up to some extent <clears throat> <coughs> sorry the legacy of the creative traditions of chaturbhuj nath nala continues in the present pastoral communities and tribes of the region it is reflected in the construction and decoration of their houses celebration of festivals religious functions and affection with their animal stocks thus their art echoes their integrity with nature and deep affection with their animals it also reflects their joy enthusiasm and folk gaiety these traditions are associated with the celebration of life now this you, you can see in india we used to celebrate deepavali and at the deepavali festival everyone whether it is poor or affluent family they used to decorate their houses so here the tribal house decorated you can see this the the poorness of this the door wooden door now this is a dancing peacock and the snakes and the, the, they they belong to different communities it is it is a banjara community it is a bhil community house and this is a agro pastoral community house <clears throat> then uh, this the bull plays very important role in agriculture uh, in their economy so it is a loved this is the domesticated animal and on the festival of dipavali uh, this the, they are decorated and one thing very important to observe that every ritual practice is associated with singing sometimes dancing also so when when and this is done by the females so when this is the going on the the women used to sing also what happened इन इंडिया वी यूज टू सेलिब्रेट लाइफ इन द इन द फॉर्म ऑफ सिक्सटीन सेक्रामेंट सोलह संस्कार राइट फ्रॉम कंसेप्शन टिल डेथ सेलिब्रेशन इज अ सोशल एक्टिविटी सो अपियर्स द रो कार्ड प्रोडक्शन now uh, here just just a few days ago we we observed this the there was a, in this the third week third week of february <coughs> the, the there was a marriage celebration and here you can see that the women are uh, carrying the earthen pots on their heads in india this the earthen pot is very much important very much sacred because this the water is the life giving force so and uh, here in the second uh, you you can see this the bride here and uh, and uh, unfortunately on 5th february february my friend ramesh kumar pancholi who discovered this the chaturbhuj nath nala and darki jattan this the rokar site passed away so uh, we we went to uh, to um, just giving giving the last homage to him so <clears throat> here is the post death ceremony of the of ramesh kumar panchali so we used to celebrate uh, this is the life right from conception till death now pre production and production process of rock art 
be carried out replication of early pupils on an experimental rock art near Darki Jattan cave and rock paintings of Chaturbhuj Nath Nala in a rock shelter nearly 32 kilometers away from the site. This is, uh, uh, this is, this is Darki Jattan cave <coughs> in the quadratic buttresses of Indragad hill near Bhanpura in Chamal Basin. This is very narrow cave, uh, one only 140 centimeter at its opening and 26 or 27 centimeter at the end. And it is a uh, uh, five, nearly five and a half meter. Uh, this is the deep and five and a half meter. This is the height. It, it um, has on its both the walls more than 500 cubules. So these are the cubules made on its walls. And it, it has gone a lot of weathering. It shows that the, it, the antiquity of these cubules also. We carried out excavations for six seasons here <clears throat> in which we found uh, we found this, the, the slaves wearing cupules. There, you, you can see this cupule is here, cupule is here, then the three cupules in a row, one cupule is here. So we, we not only found the slaves wearing cupules, but hammer, hammer stones used to make them. So this excavation revealed that the cupules were made in lower pelvic. This is the lower pelvic, uh, this is the cupule site in India. And it endorsed the antiquity of lower pelvic petroglyphs from Dhimbet also. Now we replicated We replicated the early cupules of Darkish Jattan in a nearby rock shelter uh, from uh, 2002 onwards till 2012. And there are four kinds of the cupules, but the one thing important to observe, which is uh, very much in this the uh, conscious and emotional aspect, this is the hammer when we applied force. Uh, this the the hammer is forced on the rock it rebounds with the equal force so uh, it needs uh, the strength at the same time patience also and uh, uh, we have to be very much precise focused uh, and uh, need very good planning and we need the proper hammer stones which can make the cupel on the hard quadratic rock it rebounds with the equal force so a small cupel of nearly uh, four centimeter diameter and uh, nearly eight millimeter deep. It requires nearly thirty thousand strokes. We made it in two days. Some of the cupels in three days also. So it's a it's a energy consuming and the monotonous work. So it needs the emotional support. Uh, a single person cannot execute this. So it's a teamwork, it's a teamwork. With this the emotional involvement. So we came to the conclusion that the cupils are deeply associated with life. It's not a play work. Okay. Sorry. Drive, drive. Study of rock art of CBN Chaturbhuj Nath Nala for replication. <clears throat> so I, I have not uh, this the making the presentation of all the six paper here, but I am just seeing the observation that we we first we observed we selected some of the composition, then we observed them on the site. How the particular location was selected for executing a particular composition. This is very important. That uh, whether this the execution, this the location is, is convenient for execution or difficult as execution. This is the one aspect. And the second aspect, you, you can see here, this is the rhinoceros, it is upside down. It appears upside down. And uh, all, the, all the animals and figures are uh, this the, in this direction. 
so this is the only the only com composition which is upside down but it is not really upside down when hridayashri observed uh, this the while relaxing and sitting here facing the nala then this this uh, rhinoceros appears in a right direction so the uh, this is the uniqueness of the um, how this artist thought in a different way to execute the figures which we can uh, only uh, this the understand while going to the site and uh, studying it with a different aspect and different uh, this the uh, line of thoughts then um, second task is the um, exploring the pigments <clears throat> as i told that uh, the late detrital laterite uh, was um, covering this the entire side so in the because of the rains they have been exposed so we are exploring the iron on um, the pigments iron oxide pigments near the chatrapur nath nala temple extracting color from the pigments is also a difficult task and most time consuming task and particularly when this the ochre ochre is a this the iron oxide clay and it is easy to bring out color from it but bringing out color from the uh, this the iron oxide ore having more percentage of iron is very difficult it takes more than two and two and half time um, half time more than this the uh, ochre color so it is very difficult it takes one and one and a half hour and the one important thing is that we cannot collect um, a lot uh, large uh, this amount of the color because it dries and uh, color does not dissolve in water this is the very important observation so it suspends so we have to bring out the fresh every time fresh color every time <clears throat> so it needs the the talks emotional involvement and this the enjoyment then we also experiment with the brush and we use different uh, material but most important this the we most convenient material was the uh, palm tick and dry palm tick soaked overnight for on the, in in water and then bring out then we can we can bring out this the is the very thin um, this the part which can be used uh, as a brush for making thin lines <clears throat> fresh uh, tricks cannot are not suitable for making brush we also use different uh, this is the material for making the brush then we prepared the color scale <clears throat> in the which kind of the color uh, is suitable for making the composition close to the rock painting this is our uh, um, experimental rock shelter uh, near bhanpura 32 kilometers from chatrapur nath nala then here we are executing this the replication <clears throat> and uh, on the right side is the composition replicated composition so what is important that uh, this the rock art uh, making is a team effort replication of rock art our observation now i am presenting the observation in the process of replication of rock paintings we realized that rock art production is a creative activity is a team work involving many tasks and different processes is not a play work rather it is deeply related with life involving perception of reality conceptualization of an idea and executing it in the form of a composition on the bare surface of rock it requires a well thought out plan resources congenial climate and environment 
selection of the site and sport, discipline and well coordinated teamwork and dedicated efforts. Here I want to say that we, we replicated these figures in the third week of April <clears throat> when the temperature was high and it was very difficult because the, the air was, uh, the strong air was um, this, the blowing <clears throat> and the temperature was high. So we realized that the rock paintings have been done in the congenial environment, suitable for making this rock art, maybe in the winter season or in this the uh, rainy season when there were no rain. Besides, it needs emotional motivation of the team to execute such a difficult task. During the replication process, our team members extended emotional support to each other, keeping the spirit and tempo of work high because we used to adjust um, after the noon. <clears throat> so we need the emotional support to each other. Okay. Yes. Now summing up. <clears throat> Sorry. Rock art size in deep forest and difficult geographical locations reflect human spirit of adventure and creativity. Rock art production is a social activity performed on special occasions. It is the execution of human perception of reality, his wisdom and thought processes at particular time. It also presents the human nature and ability to communicate in an effective way for multiple generations to come. It requires well thought out planning, collection of the material needed and its execution with cultural performance like dance, songs, music. It's a part of celebration of life with deep emotional involvement, hence need to be studied as the expression of the essence of life. It helps us to understand the human cognitive and cultural development in space and time in the world. Thank you. Fantastic presentation, uh, Jivivash. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, it has been very, uh, here we are, here we are both of us. So uh, a great thank you uh, for presenting. By the way, I, I also forgot to mention when I, when I was presenting, talking about the um, emotional aspects, uh, uh, a, a personal uh, uh, memory. Uh, when I went uh, to to visit the the French Paleolithic caves, when I when I it happened to me when I entered uh, the replica, of course, of Lascaux, uh, I almost uh, start to cry because of of the of the beauty of the place and the. Uh, and the importance of the of the place. It was not only beautiful; it was uh, strong. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, of course, uh, aesthetics uh, uh, always had uh, a great impact in uh, in in our in our work, cognitive, uh, and in our I mean in our system. Um, today we are so overwhelmed by images and stimuli, stimuli any sort of uh, representation uh, by movies, by, uh, by any kind of, uh, of, uh, of media, that we do not appreciate it. Uh, we have uh, also to think back what could be a world uh, that is uh, shaped by nature, mainly, and uh, the, the impact that uh, could have the, the, the rare um, aesthetic forms that uh, humans could find in, in the past. Um, of course, uh, it could also be a sort of, uh, of shock. It could also be something uh, that uh, brought into another state of mind. Uh, 
exactly as we find in rituals. So rituals, uh, um, they often uh, try to put the, the humans participating in the, in the ritual in another state of mind. So of course, uh, as you mentioned very well, the, 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 the the, the rock art uh, representations were part of a much broader social context. Uh, this has been said that I have the impression that from time to time we need the, we, I mean, in archaeological research, we need somebody to remind it because uh, we have the, the, the habit of interpreting uh, what we see only in visual form. So the other day, for example, uh, two weeks ago, there was the presentation of uh, Matteo Meschiari. It was in Italian, so probably you couldn't understand it. Um, and he said at some point uh, a sentence that uh, interested me very much. Uh, he said that the, the invisible is what much counts in, uh, in in some ways, let's say, in the rock art uh, production. It's not the visible. So uh, again, for coming to Western civilization and culture, we uh, we have the the habit of interpreting the the visual form of um, of what we find. And sometimes we forget uh, all that is non-visual and non-cognitive. So everything that uh, that we cannot do, we, we have difficulties with all that because we cannot uh, put into schemes. So we like to put schemes, and schemes are visual by by its fact that the schemes is inside the book. So we we need to 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 write things down. Um, so everything that, uh, that that cannot enter into into a square, we have difficulties to deal with that. So I think that the importance of uh, the research of the three of you that are there, even if we don't see uh, your <laughs> here you are around, <laughs> and uh, Rida actually probably yeah, is somewhere, also alongside. somewhere on the left. <laughs> So the, the amazing, amazing research that you have done, uh, I think it's a, a very important step um, for stretching and for enlarging and for making the, um, uh, our conceptualization and then our study of the rocker phenomenon wider. Um, of course, uh, there were, um, probably also rituals and, and music. And uh, sometimes during these uh, rituals, if they were um, let's say some sort of ritual, because there are many sorts of rituals, of course, but uh, some of them, they, 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 you know, they could have a big impact. We know from historically and ethnographically recorded rituals from Africa, for example, there are uh, sometimes I don't know. People fall down in trance and uh, and pass in another dimension. Uh, there are shamanic. Uh, <coughs> there are many. There is not only one kind of them. But uh, of course, the impact of, of that is uh, is uh, very very important. And sometimes we can say that the point of the rituals is much more. Uh, central for that culture than the rock art per se. The rock art is like a, a, a way for getting to a certain ritualistic point. And in the same time, I can say an instrument, for example. Uh, so here I have a guitar, for example. So if, if, uh, if I have my guitar, but this is done for making a ritual, so I can spend all my life studying the lines, uh, the dimensions, the whole, the, the material, the, the color, the, the metal, and so on. I can spend all my life because there are so many things. But the point is what I do with the guitar. 
it, the yes, music yes. and the ritual and so on. So, but of course, all that is past. We, we don't have the recording. So it's very important researchers are, as yours to remind that us to don't focus only on the guitar, but, yes, uh, yeah. <coughs> but to look forward. Um, do you think that you will, uh, uh, I think I already asked you that during the symposium, do you think, are you, are you planning some sort of uh, uh, development of this um, approach? No, we, we, will, we, we are not only planning, but we are doing, but uh, at the same time, at the same time, we need the funds. Uh, fund is also a very important aspect. Because uh, suppose uh, uh, what kind of the pigment has been used in the paintings, so we, we have to show it scientifically that whatever we are using for replication is the same pigment. It needs <coughs> the it, it needs the uh, this the X-ray diffraction and this the uh, other kind of this the the scientific study by the machines portable machines which we have to take to the site. And the scientist who can understand this, the readings on the machines. So it needs the naturally funds and we, we are looking for that. Actually, the practical aspect related with all this, the human, human aspects we can do, but uh, we have to, I remember in 1988, when I was in Darwin conference and presenting my paper on this, the ostrich eggshells and engravings <clears throat> on them, one person asked me, how do you say these are the ostrich eggshells? So I replied that, yes, I have, this is the modern ostrich eggshell with me and they are very similar. No, you will have to prove it scientifically. So I told him that, uh, okay, next time I'll, I'll come with the scientific. So uh, then I approached uh, Professor Salim Ali, an ornithologist, in well-known ornithologist in India and abroad. He suggested me the name of Professor Ashok Sahani who was a geologist and working on the dinosaur eggs. So he helped me very much. And I learned a lot of human, human behavior and humanity from him. So both husband and wife devoted two days for me uh, for the study of this, the ostrich eggshells on scanning electron microscope. Then they brought out this the study and, and presented when this the published. So then I realized that what is the scientific way of presentation? So it, our research needs to be this, the supported by the scientific outcome. So we need fund for that. Of course. Maybe, uh, maybe Ram and Hritai Shri want to say something, want to add something to what uh, you said? Maybe, uh, yes, I don't yes, know. Yes, of course, of course. I, I would like to add something from a different perspective. Yes. <clears throat> because what I've understood till uh, by hearing all the scholarly talks since uh, you can say last five to six years. <clears throat> so the whole, uh, in, uh, the whole focus is on understanding the scientific study of rock art. As you said precisely that scientifically what we are doing, we are trying to understand the things which by which we can relate directly. But if the particular incident has been occurred 5,000 years back, so there are behavioral aspects, there are aspects which are related to psychology, which I think has to be studied within the approach extending to the scientific approach. So in that perspective, I would like to relate, there's a saying in our management that when we go for studying the market, so we can only understand the 50% part as the science, but the 50% behavioral part is not understandable because there is so much, you can see infinite variety is already available there. And if you want to generalize it, or if you want to deduct a conclusion out of it, it will not be appropriate in a way because there are a number of variations. So my humble suggestion would be, my uh, input would be that if we have understood the rational part of the rock card, 
now we should extend to understand the behavioral part in terms of community living <clears throat> individual living and the whole technological development process with we can directly witness into the raw card this is what i would like to add at all it's uh, absolutely um, true what you said it's um, I, I i think you 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 shaped the, the problem in the in the good way maybe harita ishri want to say something also want to add uh, something no actually uh, just uh, today morning only she met with an accident so right now she is lying down not in a condition to speak uh, yeah just yeah. in an emotional <laughs> No, it's exactly. okay. It's okay. She, she is in an emotional. Uh, state. So, uh, just just one thing I would like to add, just to uh, uh, give more evidence to what I said, that uh, when I was presenting my lecture in the DAFO uh, in the last conference we had in two thousand eighteen, so somebody from the audience asked why the cupils were made, the cup marks were made. There? why the cup the marks cupils, yes, cupils yes. were made and the scientific answer was given that the only author can tell you that why they have created this particular art so we can study the scientific part but we cannot say anything directly that what could be the root cause behind creating this particular art now i would like to extend on the behavioral part i would like to hypothesize that these kind of if we want to understand or generalize a pattern throughout the chronological sequence so still we see we are into the trends of celebrating birthdays we are into the trends of celebrating the death days so we try to keep remember a particular memory in different ways which are happy and by which we try to belong for a longer period of time so by that we would like to hypothesize okay the cup marks could be a activity where the whole community is related maybe it could be their birthplace or the place where the marking of the birth are there or any other behavioral aspect of the community that has been plotted within that particular darki chattan site so it is a hypothesis but we will have to develop a methodology by which we can actually scientifically try to uh, prove and maybe select or reject this hypothesis so from this perspective so when uh, when you will uh, finish the, the research let us know uh, of course we will present it uh, together in the in uh, with the centro comun okay so i i think that uh, this is all i i thank you very much for uh, for your um, very kind uh, uh, presentation and for accepting in presenting here uh, in this uh, live stream uh, presentation it's also recorded so it will be a sort of document that uh, yeah. you can also use with the, for example with youtube with the youtube link if you want to you know share your research and make it known to um, other researchers uh, or institutions for uh, funding <laughs> we yeah. hope uh, so we thank all the people that um, that have been online and uh, i say to everyone see you next time thank you matthew <laughs> thank you so much thank, thank you so thank much you. for having us and please please send the recorded lecture to me so that i can use it here <laughs>